Hello students. Today we are going to start with very interesting chapter of our syllabus. One of the most interesting and one of the most beautiful chapter of our syllabus. That is chapter number 3, India and European Colonialism. Now when we are learning about colonialism, in the last chapter we studied about European colonialism in the neighboring countries of India. Today we are going to learn about in India, how European colonialism started. So in this chapter, in this lesson, we are going to learn about the spread of colonialism in India and its impact. Let us begin with the first part, learning about the countries who captured India. Starting, when we uh, come across Indian history, there are many things which comes across, like uh, there are so many dynasties who have ruled India. Like when we talk about these dynasties, whether it be uh, Mauryan dynasty, whether it be Gupta dynasty, whether it be... Uh, Mughals, anyone. So when we talk about these things, when we talk about colonialism, there was one such ruler or there was one such dynasty who was ruling in India, that was Mughal dynasty. And on the southern part, there were many such, uh, many such southern rulers, small kingdoms who were uh, controlling the southernmost part of India. Jabhi hum log baat kar about India, to Mughals and southern kings usme divided tha. The story starts in the year 1498. Vasco da Gama, the Portuguese seafarer or the Portuguese sailor was motivated and he reached to the port of Calicut, that is Cozy Cote. There were many European sailors who were finding the route to India. Finally, Vasco da Gama reached uh, India, that is uh, he reached the port of Calicut, then known as Cozy Cote. In the year 1498, once landed on the Indian coast, the Portuguese did not take long to establish themselves in India. By the beginning of 16th century, Portuguese had brought a considerable portion of Indian coast under their control. Once they reached Indian coast, Yahape, the Portuguese took advantage of the strained relations among the various rulers in South India. Now the situation was such like India, Jabi Ham Lok Dekre, as a uh, entire country kabhi aisa hua hi nahi tha. There were small small kingdoms who were ruling different parts of country. Vaise hi, the Portuguese took advantage of the strained relations among the various rulers in South India. They established their colonies on the western coast. I repeat, they established their colonies on the western coast and built forts for their protection and used them uh, to protect uh, from the colonies and also for the ext external attacks and to reinforce them continuously with supplies by using seaways. Now, un logo ne forts banaya chalega. Western coast pe jabhi ye forts banaya to jitne bhi forts banaya the, usme sabse best cheez ye tha ki wo andar andar Indian se rule, uh, matlab Indian uh, jo rulers the, usse bachna chahte the. Along with that, dusre country ke jo rulers aate hai, external attacks, usse bhi bachna chaate the. The Portuguese naval force was so strong, they used to launch sudden attacks on their enemy's territories from the sea and wreck it completely, matlab destroy it completely. The Indian local rulers could not match or could not... Uh, match to that particular uh, Portuguese war tactics and that is why later on when they established their firm control on the Indian Ocean it became necessary for the Indian rulers to get Kartas or Kartas that is called as license. License basically kis ke liye tha? The Kartas or the Kartas usually carry details like the name of the, uh, the vessel which they are carrying that is the ship, uh, the name of the captain of the ship, the port of departure, usme kya kya weaponry leke gaye hai, everything. Matlab usme include kiya gaya tha and you had to carry that license with them. Matlab jitne bhi ships Indian Ocean ke through, matlab India ke southernmost part pe kaun sa sea hai? Indian Ocean. To sea bol raho, ocean hai. So if the local rulers dared to set out on the sea without a Portuguese license, the ship were either seized or sunk by the force. Matlab just imagine kitana power. The Portuguese had become so powerful that even the mighty Mughals and the Sultanate, I repeat, the mighty Mughals and the Sultanate in the south had to buy a license from them. By 1608, the Portuguese had their own colonies in the western coast of India. And alag alag jaga pe colonies banana chalu kya on the western coast and along with that southern coast. Like for example, Diu, Daman, Chaul, Goa, including Sashti and Bardesh. Now, Sashti is a part of Maharashtra today and Bardesh is a part of Goa today. Honnavar, Gangoli, Basrur, Mangalore, Kannur, Kodangalur, Kochi and Kolam. Similarly, on the eastern coast, they had trader colonies at Nagpattinam, Mylapore and Hugli in Bengal. Now, this stretch of the Portuguese empire had its capital at Goa. 
ना गोवा में कैपिटल बनाया कंट्रोल पूरा ले लिया द पोर्चुगीज कॉलोनीज हैड स्प्रेड फ्रॉम केप ऑफ गुड होप टू मकाओ इन चाइना दे ऑल वर कंसिडर्ड टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन एम्पायर ऑफ द पोर्चुगीज बेटर नोन एज एस्तादो द इंडिया मतलब क्या मतलब इंडियन एम्पायर का पार्ट और द पोर्चुगीज कंट्रोल देर वर सेवरल ऑफिस होल्डर्स अपॉइंटेड बाई द पोर्चुगीज किंग वाइस री कापितान ई जराल दैट इज वाइस रॉय और जनरल ऑफ द आर्मी फॉर थ्री ईयर्स टेन योर दे यूज टू बी एन एडवाइजरी देर यूज टू बी एन एडवाइजरी बोर्ड टू असिस्ट द वाइस री दैट इज वाइस रॉय विच इंक्लूडेड आर्क बिशप दैट इज आर्स बिस्पो जैसे उसके पोर्चुगीज में बोला जाता है ऑफ गोवा जज और द चांसलर इन चार्ज ऑफ कंपनीज पोजेशन विदोर द फाजेंदा कैप्टन दैट इज कपितान एंड अ फ्यू एरिस्टोक्रेट्स फ्रॉम पोर्चुगल वाइस रॉय और द वाइस री यूज टू बी प्रिसाइडिंग हेड ऑफ द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सेटअप इन द अर्लियर हाफ ऑफ द सेवनटीन सेंचुरी फाइव शिप्स यूज टू अराइव एवरी ईयर इन द इंडियन पोर्ट्स दीज शिप्स वर इक्विप्ड विथ कैन जस्ट इमेजिन वेपनरी फुल लोडेड विथ वेपनरी द पोर्चुगीज हैड शिप्स बिल्डिंग फैसिलिटीज एट गोवा दू दमन दमन दू गोवा Goa Diu Daman Shipbuilding Facility, durable teak wood of best quality, essential for building ships, was available in these regions. And इसके लिए specially basically उसके लिए ही वो वहाँ पे ship building का importance दिखाया था. The Portuguese used to deploy seamen from Portugal to India. In those times, Indian rulers did not maintain a naval force. खुद का naval force नहीं था. Therefore, Indian rulers found it difficult to find the uh, find uh, to fight back. the strong naval force of the portuguese only one exception was that of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj who had built his own navy the dutch and the british defeated the portuguese navy or the portugal naval force in the 17th century in the sea battle now the portuguese prohibiting the building of any religious monument except churches in the indian provinces under their rule they also prohibited celebration of religious festivals or wedding functions also wo bhi stop kiya ke bhai abhi hum log idhar ye allow nahi karenge the portuguese rulers also tried to suppress that is restrict the local language people were offered employment with the intention to attract their uh, basically employment diya tha kiske liye for attracting them to christianity in the beginning of their rule they made goa a free port that resulted in attracting traders from various countries to goa right so the next rulers who came across after portuguese were the british now the british east india company was established on 31st of december 1600 queen elizabeth granted permission to the company to trade in the eastern countries now in the beginning of east india company's operation the operation that is the business was very limited they used to send their cargoes to the eastern countries to sell the british goods in those countries to buy spices with the profits earned there and the cash carried from home to sell the spices in england and to earn profits again सो बेसिकली उन लोगों का एक एक सिंपल बेसिक मोटिव था कि इतने से इतना ही हम लोगों को ट्रेड करना था एंड रादर उन लोगों को उतना ही मिला था द सेल बोर्ड्स ऑफ दोज डेज नीडेड टू प्लान देयर फॉरवर्ड एंड बैकवर्ड वॉयज इन स्पेसिफिक पर्टिकुलर पीरियड ऑफ अ ईयर देर फॉर टू कैरी आउट ट्रेड टू कैरी आउट ट्रेड ट्रांजेक्शन was more tedious that is it was more uh, difficult for them under such circumstances the britishers were in need of permanent place to build warehouse of their uh, to store the goods basically brought at a lower price the british boats used to sail from england during the month of december to april and used to return to england after a year in the month of january after completing trading transactions in india so there this required that uh, they basically they required to stay in india and jab bhi un logo ko zarurat tha ke bhai hum logo ko india mein rehna hai over a period of 9 to 13 months hence the company decided to build their factories and factories mein matlab basically factories banana chalu kiya naam de diya emporiums a place where goods are brought stored and sold in india the staff of these factories the the staff were called as factors now just imagine they were factors matlab aisa naam de diya tha factors in the year 1623 the british government under the civil and military law granted the company an authority of adopting punitive measures for erring staff punitive matlab punishment wala erring staff the staff who were not working properly the company was also given the right of monopoly to trade in the eastern countries charles ii the king of england issued a charter 
allowing the company to build forts in India to maintain an army and to make treaties with the non-Christians. In the latter half of the 17th century, the company operated from Surat and Madras, that is Chennai, <coughs> the eastern coast, that is Odisha, Bengal, in India and other eastern coast, uh, other eastern countries were under company's jurisdiction. The factories at Rajapur in Maharashtra, port city of Mokha, that is that was later on known as Mocha, in Yemen, in the Red Sea, Basra, in the Persian Gulf, these were factory staff comprised of an accountant and in charge of the store, a treasurer, some factors and clerks together. Matlab, in addition, everything together, ye sab ek jaga pe settle ho In addition, there was a Christian priest, matlab, basically Christianity spread karne ke liye, the Christian missionaries, a surgeon and his assistant, cooks, companies, presidents, personnel, uh, servants and trumpet blowers. Everyone royally a the British citizens were also appointed in the factories as ap uh, apprentices. Apprentices means the people who are learning trade, clerks and also factors. Everybody, right from the president to apprentices, lived in the factory premises. All were provided food by the company, mess. Basically, food mein wo kya dete the? the meals provided the staff, including uh, bread, diya jata tha, meat, diya jata tha, khichdi diya jata tha, of pulses and rice, achar diya jata tha, pickles, achar, vichar, sab kuch. They were permitted to trade trade various things that is various commodities except those which were banned by the company such as textile tha, indigo tha, spices tha, wool tha, uh, lead, uh, lead, corals, ivory etc. The company started building forts in India as a part of their strategy they built a fort and a factory in Chennai. The fort was named as Fort St. George. A mint was established in Chennai. The British issued their own coinage of gold, silver, alloys and copper from this mint. In the year 1661, mint means coin use hota hai wo. In the year 1661, Charles II, the King of England, was engaged to Braganza. Braganza, the Princess of Portugal. The King of Portugal gifted the island of Mumbai to Charles II. On this occasion, Matlab Charles II ko gift mila Mumbai, the island of Mumbai. Now, this was uh, given as a gift, that is Mumbai was given as a gift. Abraham Shipman, an Englishman, was assigned uh, 500 soldiers and was appointed as a governor of Bombay. In the year 1665, Mumbai was fully under the British control. Mumbai comprised of seven islands, seven islands, namely... Mahim, Parad, Mumbai, Wadala, Worli, Sayan, that is Shiv, and Mazgaon. Charles II leased Mumbai to East India Company because the expenditure for its maintenance exceeded then the income earned from it. So in the year 1669, the company appointed Sir George Oxenden as the governor of Surat and commander-in-chief of Mumbai. A British mint was established. Again, as students, mint matlab from where the coin mint hota hai na, coin banaya jata hai wo. A British mint was established in Mumbai and coins of silver, copper and zinc were issued from these. This encouraged the merchants and artisans to come and settle down in Mumbai. The company had five to six small ships and around 300 soldiers to ensure the security of Mumbai. The soldiers were given guns and swords for the protection and waha pe, yaha pe basically Mumbai mein emporium banana start kiya. Now, jabhi ye factory bana liya, ye emporium bana liya, this was a mindset, okay? It was very much clear. Britishers ke saath saath, dousra ek country tha, jo yaha pe aya tha. Kya naam tha? Dutch. The Dutch companies came in the year 1602 together to form a company named as United East India. Dutch government issued a license to the company to conduct trading with the eastern countries. Now, eastern countries ke saath trade karne ke liye Dutch government ne ye bana hai. Dutch government matla basically the people of Netherlands or Holland. The same license permitted them to appoint staff to establish factories to build forts, to engage in battles against the eastern countries and also to sign treaties with them. Accordingly, the company appointed a governor general to take care of the Indian affairs. By the middle of the 17th century, the company had established Dutch colonies and factories right from 
I repeat, right from the eastern coast of Africa to Japan. In it encompassed the present day regions of Mozambique, South Africa, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Siam, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Taiwan, China, Japan, Indonesia and Malaysia. The Dutch built their various buildings in the premises of, uh, of their factories and also fortification walls around the uh, around that particular factory for security. The Dutch also had their native uh, people for their staff. They established their first factory in the year 1602 at Petapuli in the northern part of Koromandal coast which is today's day Tamil Nadu. Their other factories are were built in Machilipatnam, Pulikat, Thirupapulyur, Port Nova, Karikal, Agra, Ahmedabad, Baruch, Chinsura, Thatta, Khambat, Surat and Nagapattan. They obtained permission from the Vijayanagar court and built fort in the in Pulikat and Nagapattan. Now Nagapattan again it is in Tamil Nadu. Later they defeated the Portuguese and acquired the forts of Kochi, Kodanglur, Kannur and Kolam. They also obtained monopoly in black pepper uh, trade by entering a treaty with the king of Kochi. Now remember students what is monopoly? Monopoly means right to become single seller. At the beginning, at the beginning of all these things, at the beginning of the 17th century, the Dutch naval force was very strong. At any given moment, they could deploy at least 20 warships. Now just imagine 20 warships, at one time. Pe. And an army of three to 4,000 soldiers, itana on the spot rakhna was very difficult. And basically other European countries were afraid because of this thing. The Mughal, Adil Shahi and Qutub Shahi ships were required to obtain license from them. Iski wajah se unko license lena pada from the Dutch. If any ship was launched without a license, it was seized by the Dutch. The next country about which we are going to learn is French or the France. In the year 1664, French East India Company, imagine students, Dutch aaye the, United East India Company, Britishers aaye the with British East India Company, French aaye the with French East India Company. In 1664, French East India Company was established with the initiative of Jean Baptiste Colbert, the French finance minister of King Louis XIV, King Louis XIV of Bourbon dynasty. The company was given the authority to trade with the eastern countries to maintain army and navy and also exemption from taxes. The company was also given the authority to enter a war or treaty within the eastern rulers. With the eastern rulers basically. In 1666, the company sent a diplomatic contingent to the court of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb and obtained permission to establish a factory in Surat. The first French factory in Surat was established in 1668 with the permission of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. Then the factories at Pondicherry, that is Puducherry, Chandranagar, Mahe, Karaikal and Machlipatnam were built. During, the, during this period, the French were fighting with Qutub Shahi ruler and the Dutch. Pondicherry was the main center of the French operations. It was ruled by the Nawab of Karnataka. This fight chalu hua, wo basically this region. Ke liye hua. Kis ke liye? Karnataka. Ke liye. The members of Nawab's family were fighting amongst themselves for the throne. So what The British and the French dono ko pata chal gaya ke bhai ab ye log andar andar hi jagad rahe. So British and French both started intervening. Matlab wo logo ne kya kiya? Wo interfere karna un logo ne start kiya. It resulted into three battles between Britishers and French. These battles, uh, three battles between Britishers and French in the years from 1744 till 1763 CE. These battles were called as Carnatic Wars. Now, first battle was won by French. The other two battles, second and third battle, were won by Britishers. The French were defeated by the British in the third battle. With the defeat of French, there was no European rivalry left in India for the British. And finally, the Britishers captured almost the entire India. 
in the next lesson dear students we are going to learn about the resistance to the foreign powers in india put up by chhatrapati shivaji maharaj stay tuned